here are my March favourites. Can you zip up my dress? <laughs> <laughs> So in March, I travel quite a bit and you know when I travel quite a bit, I get the chance to watch movies and so this was on a long flight and the movie I watched is called A Simple Favour. So I watched the shots for it um, when I was watching another movie and I wanted to watch it because Blake Lively is in it and I have like super girl crush on Blake Lively except um, for some reason the trailer made it look like a thriller. I saw my mom. She told me to say hi to Stephanie. And then I was like, oh, scary movie, don't wanna watch. Uh, but then I was on the flight and then I, I there was really nothing that I wanted to watch. So I was like flipping through and then this came up and they put it under the genre of drama slash comedy. So I was like, huh? That's not a thriller. So I was like, okay, I'll watch it. And I really liked it. It's, it stars um, Blake Lively, as I said. But the real star of the show is Anna Kendrick. And so, uh, Henry Golding is in it as well. So I thought that was also why I wanted to watch it, you know. Uh, just to see how he would do after Crazy Rich Asians. And uh, yeah, I really like it. Anna Kendrick is like your good girl mom. And Blake Lively is like your bad mom. And then it, I guess the thriller part of it comes about because you don't really know where the plot is going. Okay, I don't watch many movies. so. I've been told that sometimes when the plot is really predictable, I still can't tell. Um, so, you know, for me, but I really liked it because I thought it was well paced, it wasn't scary, it had Blake Lively. Um, and she looked very awesome in clothes. <laughs> but there were plot twists that made it pretty cool. So I'll say, I would put it under the genre of a slightly... I wouldn't say it's comedy, but dark comedy, if I had to say a comedy at all. I would say definitely watch um, A Simple Favour. Right, so another favourite is this... Pixie by Petra Palette. So you can see the shades. Actually, you can see which shades I've been using a lot of. So this is my new favorite because for some reason the colors really work for my skin tone. So I used most of these. Like I use these as like I like to highlight, like put a really shimmery shade underneath my eyes. Uh, sometimes the pink I use just as a wash when I just you know want a very simple look. These two are my favorite colors, and this one I use just as a sort of eyeliner. So it's all very wearable. I love the shades. In terms of texture, not my favorite favorite because it's a, you know, I have issues with eyeshadows that are very powdery, if that's the right word to use. I know it's a powder eyeshadow, but you know, there are some shadows where you, when you put it on your eye, you can feel like the light dustings and they dust on your cheek and, and pisses me off really. Um, I would say my favorite eyeshadow brand is still MAC because MAC Shadows are pigmented but not powdery and it's still easy to blend. So this one's a little bit powdery, a little bit will fall, but it is actually really easy to blend and really light. It's not as long wearing as MAC, but it wears pretty well for most of the day without a touch up. Maybe sometimes I just, because my eyes are a bit watery, I might have to touch up like the, the lower lid a little bit, but otherwise I think it's pretty good and uh, yeah, I love the colors. Right, so another makeup favorite for this month is from 3CE. So I actually, I don't know if I've talked about this before. This is the... Okay, I don't know what range this is. Lip tint. Velvet lip tint. Sorry, my nose is itchy. <laughs> this is the velvet lip tint and I have it in a few shades. But uh, a friend was going to Korea and asked if he wanted anything and a bunch of my girlfriends got, you know, wanted to stock up on this. So I said, okay, I'll get one too. And I just looked at the shades online. So I just picked this shade called Pink Break and I really like it. Like, I mean, I really like the shade of pink, like I like matte pink lipsticks that are soft but you know certain pinks can make you look a bit sallow, this one actually makes me look rosier and more awake and it looks good even without if I don't have any other makeup on, it actually looks nice, a very French look you know, just lipstick. Yeah I really like this shade and the texture of this is not long wearing so that's the only thing but it's very, it really feels very velvety and very soft and it gives you like a soft matte effect. I like lipsticks where it's a bit matte but I can blur the edges. Not everyone likes it. I know some people like the really precise lip but I like it when the edges of my lips are blurred because then it makes it look more full somehow. I'm, I'm convinced and I always want fuller lips so this is my new favourite lipstick. Uh, I have a new spot. <laughs> Actually it's not really new but um, I used to wakeboard when I was in university and then I stopped. I completely completely stopped because uh, my skin it's very sensitive and it's just gotten more and more sensitive over the years so too much sun exposure will make it break out 
also, you know, you have to kind of maintain your skin and sun is bad. So I just kind of cut down on my sun activities. So I've been going out to wakeboard at sea. Um, but then I tried cable ski again. I used to do it in Batam and there's a there's a wake park in Singapore. So I, I started out because I dragged <laughs> Ian, if you saw a previous video, uh, to go and try it out. But I've gotten quite into it, you know. So I finally got the nerve to try the obstacles, which is the whole point of going to a cable ski. Uh, cable ski park because it's kind of like you go round and round so it's at, I'm at the very like learning stage right now so it's all very exciting I, I finally can go on like the box um, I had one or two bad falls though and I finally can go on the kicker which is like a ramp and you get a bit of air time so that's quite fun um, and I'm slowly and hoping to learn how to do a rally this week so that is my new favourite thing and I try to make time for it uh, at least once or twice a week the other good thing about it is you can do it at night so you don't get the sun I managed to finish a book this month so you know this year I told myself that I don't know for some reason in 2018 I just didn't make time to read and this year I'm glad to say that I finally have made a lot more time to read I also listen to audiobooks so that's a form of reading as well and um, yeah I've completed a lot more books this year than I have last year so one of the books I read this year um, and I really liked is called How to Fix a Broken Heart it's by Guy Winch and I read it because I, I watched this guy's TED talk uh, Guy Winch and it was also on the same topic and I thought that you know he what he said made a lot of sense I have quite a few friends going through you know breakups right now and I want to know how I can help them and uh, how yeah how I can help them to feel better and get over it faster people always ask me they think I get over breakups very fast to be honest outwardly I do but how I feel inside it usually takes me like years to get over someone like honestly quite honestly or like even though i don't want to be with them anymore it takes me years to let them go uh, but the initial this one is more to address the initial stage of a breakup like the sort of heart-wrenching pain you feel and you know when i see my friends go through that it's it's quite hard to take so i read this in the hope of helping them to get through it because they don't really like to read the main uh, principle is like basically he talks about how you need to cut contact i mean it's all quite basic stuff but some of it is steeped in science and he's a, um, a psychologist so that helps as well i would say that if you have a broken heart or if you have a friend who's suffering from a broken heart read the book or at least uh, watch his ted talk that's shorter if you don't like to read and you don't want to sit still for so long i think his ted talk's only like 20 minutes so i would say do that so those are my favorites for the month of March. I know we're in April now and it's my birthday month and my favorite month of the year. So I have a lot more April favorites for you. Um, hopefully uh, not so late. Otherwise, I'll catch up with you on Instagram and on Facebook and do drop me a line to let me know what favorites you had so I can check them out as well. See you. Bye. <laughs> I've had such bad throat this month, guys. I've lost my voice like twice.